Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Battle Brothers, shall we? Well, you know, I was thinking, and unfortunately as we look at ourselves, we do have a back row fighter in Burnfried here with this kind of pole arm, but it's not ideal. I'd like one more ranged combatant. And I think what I'm going to do is talk about something that I did not mention before, and let's see if we can find anything. So in this town, unfortunately, the only throwing items that they have are nets. Um, but at the other town that we went to, the, the larger settlement, they did sell some javelins and some axes, which are equipment that you can throw that has a limited number of charges as a ranged weapon and provide a little bit of extra range with your characters that's actually quite nice. So we have a, a reasonable amount of money, and I'm going to walk up here. It does take a while, but notice you move faster on the roads. So our people will, you know, our band here is going to go faster along the road to get to Malkberg, and it might take us a bit of time. However, it gives us the opportunity to run in and to check out the marketplace and see that indeed uh, they are selling these bundle of javelins, for example. Now, it says five out of five charges, and they use this ammunition. This is an assortment of arrows, bolts, and throwing weapons, and it automatically refills your quivers after a fight, but it takes a lot. So um, you don't necessarily, like, I made the mistake of giving everybody these because I love them, but it's really hard to maintain. It's expensive to maintain. So early, we're just going to kind of want to buy one stack of these. And this will give us one extra ranged fighter, which might make all the difference in the world for us in terms of keeping people upright. So I'm going to leave here and let's go ahead and check out the weaponsmith and just see. Yeah, they have javelins as well. They also have throwing axes. Uh, so you can buy either throwing axes or javelins, whichever way you like it. Uh, and I'm not going to buy another stack because they're just too expensive, but they're so great. Because once you use five, you'll just refill it from your ammo stack. So what I think I'm going to do here is, um, we do have the bow, but we can't use it. I'm going to take this bundle of javelins and I'm going to equip it as Burnfried's primary weapon. But then what I'm going to do is actually switch this down here so what we'll do is we'll start the battle with this equipped as his primary weapon and throwing and then when we want to we'll switch over to this pitchfork and and try to reach out with it when the enemies get closer so this will just give us a little bit of extra oomph so that maybe just maybe you know we can take out Hoggart's men, like one of their men, before they get close to us, or something to that effect. So we're going out, and it's getting to be evening, but I'm going to still just move here. And you'll notice your characters auto-move on the map in the fastest manner possible. So they're going to take the road as long as they can, and then diverge over here. You will see that they visibly are moving slower across the terrain. And that's okay, because it's grassy. Now, whenever you see this screen, you'll see that there's a few brigand thugs and a brigand poacher. So, this is telling you what types of enemies you'll see. And as you get better at the game, you'll understand what level they are. You can even see here, you know, this guy's got some more stuff equipped. The poacher is more difficult, the thugs are easier. So if you see a bunch of poachers right now, well then, that's going to be really challenging. Thugs are what we want to see. The poacher, uh, we'll see, but I'm betting this is actually probably Hoggart, uh, the, the main dude. So we're going to engage. Now, I engaged, and you'll notice it's nighttime. Nighttime is really bad, as are any kind of inclement you know, um, visibility situations for ranged attack because you just don't have that much visibility. So we're right up on their campsite, however, and we can't see very much because it's night. First thing you want to do when you're in combat is just take a moment to get a lay of the surroundings. What can you see? What's on the map? Are there elevation problems? 
this game, we haven't seen it yet, but Battle Brothers rewards higher elevation, you know, having the high ground Anakin so profoundly that you need to prioritize the strategic positioning on high ground, or if you're trying to attack from low ground, you're going to be at such a disadvantage uh, that it's, it's diabolical. But this is a pretty flat map where we are, so that's good. This tree is blocking, this cypress tree is blocking a little bit of uh, our line of fire, but nothing prohibitive. And we have seven of us against four of them, so that's nice. Now, when you can't see the enemy, what I typically do, and you'll see right here, by the way, it says nighttime. So you can wait and just camp out and wait until daytime to approach them if you want. And that's certainly something that you can do. You get We're getting 30% off of our range skill and 30% less range defense in the night. It's just hard to fight at range at night. This is another thing. These are significant impacts. Nighttime, terrible for range and visibility. But we only have actually two ranged. So if my company was comprised of, you know, five archers and I really, really like, or even more, had more range and I was relying on it more heavily, then there's no way we attack at night. But I attack at night, number one, just to show you how bad it is to attack at night if you're a part of your game plan or a large part of your game plan is ranged combat. But also because, yeah, you're going to like reduce the ability of these two characters, but that's not that big of a deal for us. Um, and if they had a lot of range, we could neutralize that. So if you were actually less focused on range... Um, attacking at night would give you, you know, a benefit, although you do receive a, a range defense penalty at night because you can't really see the arrows coming at you to, like, dodge. They just fly out of the darkness and maybe they hit you. But what I do when I can't see and it's the archers is I just push spacebar and delay. We're just going to delay with our ranged characters. I'm actually going to delay with everybody. And here they are jumping in. So they are coming up on this top portion and they do have oh okay so their poacher is not hoggart hoggart is right here their poacher um is a, a ranged character and poacher might not necessarily be ostensibly more difficult than the thug it might just be a, a build type where they have ranged weapons instead and so let's pay attention to which one that denotes and you kind of have to keep um notes yourself to like okay wait a minute what's a poacher do how hard are they when so next time you encounter them you'll know exactly what thugs are about what poachers are about so they're coming up on top which gives us there's one more of their people that we can't see now we can start to try to throw our javelin um but nothing is in range it's really hard to see what is actually in range um because of uh, the dark screen, but the you can um, right click to get out of that and then mouse over this and it says this costs 4 AP and um, this has a range of 4 tiles so we can go 1, 2, 3, 4 um, so we're right outside of range, so we'll just delay and I'm going to continue uh, delaying with my people although I could step back and surround this character if I wanted. And I think I'll do that. I'm going to move this character just back here and just wait. And I'll move this character up and wait. And I'm going to stay right here and wait. Okay, so now, yeah, they're committing everything to this top. So it's interesting. This is a great game. You see the strategy of it. This cypress tree and these things have kind of caused them... Uh, the AI to not really divide and conquer, but to focus their entire force up on this top portion of the map. So we need to alter our positioning to best defend against them coming from up here. So we want our people to be in range and able to attack. So I'm actually going to move here. We still need to be mindful of this poacher. This tree should block the poacher from being able to shoot Ferdinand right now. And we'll just wait. Now, if we want to attack, we would need to move our archer up. And um, that's certainly something... Our crossbowmen, rather, up. And I'm going to do that. 
And now I can shoot right here, but I only have a 32% chance to hit. So I'm going to just wait and see if they're going to do anything else before we go. And they really aren't. I'm going to try to move this character all the way around to up here. And let's see. Can't hit anybody yet, so we'll just wait. Waiting, by the way, and doing nothing on the turn is actually pretty good in this game if you can get away with it because it helps you with your fatigue. We really aren't seeing fatigue a lot, but this blue bar, as the battle goes on, our people are just going to get tired. And the more stuff we do, unnecessary actions, movements, attacks that we take, we will become tired and then when we might need to have a burst of energy we won't be able to do anything which is brutal so right here just us waiting um is a reasonable such strategy for us now they're going to be able to move into attack range next round and we're just going to wait for it you'll see always look down here at the bottom center of the heads-up display there's just oswald and ferdinand left after they go if i delay I, there's no more like you can delay once but you can't delay twice. Once you delay a second time with one of your brothers, that's their turn. They're done. And it doesn't come back to them. So once these two people go, the round is over. And we're going to start a new initiative and a new round. And they're going to shoot. They tried to shoot, but they're missing. You can look. Um, look at this. I mean, this is how bad their chance was. The poacher took shots with a chance of five. They had a 5% chance to hit because it's night, because there's a tree, like because of how far away it is. Just all of the minuses that they received right there. Uh, luckily, they didn't hit us. So fantastic. Now it's up to us. Now, Hoggart's coming in the front, which is surprising. And he's really annoying for us because he's got heavy armor and he's got a shield. So we can try to shoot, but we still only have an 18% chance to hit. So I'm actually going to wait. And I could try to throw my javelin. And I have a 9% chance to hit. I'm going to wait. Now, why am I waiting? I'm waiting because Hoggart will get to go again. Uh, let's see here. Uh, but not till this guy goes. Actually, did Hoggart move all of his spaces? I'm not sure yet. I'm going to move to right. Hmm. I'm going to wait. And let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to move up here. There we go. And now at this point, what we can do is some pretty clever stuff with our javelin ears. Um, our spearmen, rather. If we want, we have the option of doing spear wall or shield wall. These are both defensive abilities where if the enemy comes within range with spear wall for example we automatically get an attack against them and then there's shield wall which gives um defense to people next to us and to ourselves if we think they're going to come in and hit just to make us harder to hit these do take up a massive amount of fatigue like spear wall takes up 30 fatigue it's a great ability but it's very very costly to maintain this Let's see, when are they going again? They're not going again until this dude, then this dude. I honestly think I'm just going to pass. Mm. And we need to start attacking. So I'm going to move in. So I've decided to kind of fight right here and start attacking attacking Hoggart in this position. We're going to move Wendell over here to attack with the axe, hopefully try to break his shield. I've been waiting because his shield's going to be super annoying for blocking our ranged attacks. And if we can keep the fight right here, we really hurt their poacher because he's going to have to be firing through this tree and maybe even Hoggart. And remember, you can't fire through your own allies unless you're directly over their shoulder, like right behind them. So this will neutralize. Now, the, the, this guy might move down around here to fire on us, but he, it's a, these tiles are um, blocked. So you can actually click this button up here or push B, and then you could see which tiles are blocked. So these tiles, like nobody can move through these tiles. 
So this is also why the enemy, you know, this caused them to have to shift and, and split and move up here. So let's try to take advantage of them being up here. Now, I have an option to use knockback, and it says use the shield to knock a target away by one tile. Target hit will receive fatigue and may take damage if they're pushed down several levels of height. So good knocking them off a cliff. Um, a rooted target can't be knocked back, but you know, it gives you a bonus chance to hit, but at the same time, it's just not as good as doing a simple thrust right here for us. So I'm going to do it a thrust right here. We have a 60% chance to hit and we did hit, but we hit his armor and that's great. So we're just wearing it down. We're going to push space and wait, and then we want to move with the ax and I'm going to go right here. And I want to do split shield and see if we can just break his shield. So it has a 100% chance to hit. And we did. Fantastic. So this guy no longer has his shield. Now he moved. He's using shield wall. You see how he raised it up? Like Sometimes the actions happen really fast. But remember, you can just always open the combat log and look. And it says right here, uh, Wendell destroyed Hoggart's shield and the brigand thug used shield wall. So... He's providing a little extra defense to Hoggart, which is annoying, but by no means the end of the world. Now, because of how I did this, unfortunately, Ferdinand is kind of like taken out of the equation um, because he can't really get anywhere. And I don't want to move down here on some mission because the poacher will just take him down. So instead, I'm going to try and just run him like over here. And I don't want to move here because I don't want to block this square so i'm going to just uh keep this guy here push space and it's this is a great thing to see look down at the bottom yeah hoggart did use all of his movement to get there so it's only our brothers left so i'm going to step right here and whenever you're going to move somebody you always have to pay attention to how many AP it takes to do the movement. So right now, I, I can see it takes two, and how many AP is your attack? So this is three AP. You don't want to move and not have enough left to attack. So keep that in mind. Always calculate how many movement points, or action points, is it going to take to move and attack. I can shoot, and I have a 36% chance to hit uh, Hogger. So I'm going to try, and we did hit him. Ooh, and we did a bunch of damage. That's great, and we have enough AP to reload. I'm going to move right here with Burnfried, and I'm going to try to throw a javelin. I actually have a good chance. All right, we missed, which is a shame, and I could switch to my pitchfork if I wanted to, but it takes four action points, so I'd have to do that next turn, and the problem with that is the pitchfork's attacks are so laborious uh, that we might not be able to switch and attack in the same round. Now, later, you can get traits or perks with your characters that allow them to switch weapons faster and do things more efficiently. But right now, it's very slow to, like, take these away. So I'm probably going to be throwing these javelins, even though they're not fantastic. We'll wait with him. And uh, Bjarne has all of their actions left. And all I'm going to do is move up here. I'm not going to use Spearwall because I believe it ends at the end of the turn. And they can't act, and so I don't want to just build up 30 fatigue for no reason. But I also don't want to step ahead and attack, because I don't have enough AP to move and attack. And I want to keep the formation such that we get the surrounded benefit. So I'm simply going to wait. And with this character too, um, I could move up and attack Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to move up and attack. I'm going to move right here, and I have enough if I move to hit Hoggart. And we can try to do a bunch of damage to Hoggart right here. We have an 83% chance to hit because he's um, surrounded. And now you can see I have to wait, and everybody's pretty much done. But I can move up here. Here we go. And now we go. All right, so Hoggart tried to attack us. Um... Now, you saw that little flag up here. Um, he's getting... His morale is getting a little bit... Whenever anybody moves into your threatened area, people have, like, a negative morale hit. And the more that happens, the more they could get wavered or afraid. 
but we're doing actually okay. And this is why spears, I love them so much. Look at this. They are 4 AP. Now, you know what? Um, I misspoke. This guy is still on shield wall. So, shield, if I would have done spear wall, it would have lasted until he acted next, not at the end of the, the round. So, please, um, uh, I, I misspoke about that. And it's much more powerful uh, because of that fact. But I still am okay with not doing it because uh, now, look at this. I'm going to get to do two thrusts. I mean, I would have done this anyway, but I have no fatigue. So I'm going to go one. I missed, and that time we hit that guy. We just destroyed his armor. So this guy is ready to be destroyed. The axe is super powerful. However, the problem with the axe is it takes six action points, so you only get one attack per round, whereas that's why the spear is good. It's accurate, and it's easy to use in terms of action points. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just swing at Hoggart, and he's dead. We chopped off his head. Oh my goodness, look at that. Now, when that happens, you see the white flag. Every single enemy, well, not all of them. This guy's not affected, but these two enemies are now wavering because their buddy has been cleaned. So that's an amazing result. Very good job. I'm just going to wait. And now I can fire um, if I want. But notice how if I try to fire, this character is in my line of fire. So there's a kind of a red shield with an arrow that appears over top of my ally, meaning like I could hit my own person. So instead of letting that happen, I'm simply going to move right here. And I'm going to fire over this guy's shoulder. It's not a very good chance to hit, but I won't hit my own people. And he blocked it with his shield, which is fine. We'll reload. All right. Now it's time. Um, I'm actually not going to bother. I'm going to try to take down this dude as opposed to this guy. Uh, because this guy is wavering. So if we can take this guy down, it should crush this guy's morale. Oh boy, that's a good hit. So we'll just keep the combat log open. Uh, we hit him. We pierced his lung. And I'm just going to push one to do my basic thrust again. And he's dead. And now these enemies are both breaking. Uh, so, like, their morale is even worse. They are trying to run away. Um, can I get a hit? Let's see. How much it takes for AP to throw the javelin? And if I move here, one, two, this will take four. I still think this person will be in the way if I try to do that. So... What I'm going to do is actually just then switch to this and um, just accept the fact that uh, it, it does take 6 AP to attack with this. But I'm just going to start moving over here. No problem. And then this character can step up and attempt to you know, finish this guy. He's got his shield, so he's really annoying. And he's doing shield wall again, which is why he's blocking so well. But trust me, we love to see that he's doing shield wall because him being defensive means he's not hurting us. So now I'm going to move over here. And we've surrounded this guy even further. Now the cool thing, we haven't seen this yet, but maces can uh, do an attack which like we can either bash them, okay? And we can also try to knock them out and stun them. So let's see if we can try to stun this guy. Because it says right here, um, a heavy blow intended to stun or incapacitate anyone unlucky enough to be hit for one turn. Stun targets cannot keep up their shield wall, spear, spear wall, or defensive skill. So this will, like, try to break him, uh, but he blocked it with his shield, and that's okay. Wendell is out of movement, or out of... He, he can move, but not very much. So we're just going to pass the turn with him. And this guy is trying to shoot in the dark through the tree, and it's not going well. I'll just wait with him. And, all right. I'm just going to kind of, uh, let's see. Actually, here we go. I can move right here, and I can attack this guy. You can attack through your own buddy with a reach weapon like this pitchfork. It impales for two tiles, and it can be used from behind the front line, just like a range, like through your buddy. I don't have a high chance to hit, but I tried. And I can move all the way around here and still attack. This guy's blocking like a champ which is expected because of his shield, but it's okay. Oh, God, I hit my own <laughs> person. <laughs> I forgot. There's two people. You can't shoot through two people, just one of them. That was funny. All right, luckily, he blocked it with his shield, and he's like, what have you done? And I feel bad, but I'm going to keep hiding behind this tree from the poacher and just end the turn. Then we're going to use our spear 
and finally we hit the guy, and again. And now we're really hitting this guy. And I'm gonna spear thrust, get him, and thrust, and now this guy's getting beat up. He's almost gone. Uh, I can move all the way over here, but it just puts me in easy range for the poacher. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, just wait. I don't need to get this guy hit. All right, now Ferdinand uh, is back in the position where he can try to knock this guy out, but let's not even bother. Bash is 4 AP. Let's just do this twice. Done. Now this guy is terrified, and it's all over. So we're going to spend um, our efforts running straight at this dude. I'm going to move down here, and I'm just going to spend all my movement going here. This guy can't act again. Now the enemy retreats. So in this case, it says right here, the enemy is battered and beaten. Those few still alive scatter away in all directions. Will you hunt them down or claim their head and possessions or declare the battle won? We want to run this guy down because we want to get any of his gear. If he has a quiver, I'd be so happy to receive it. So um, you can just let them go if you don't care and you just want to get out of it. Like sometimes if you're bleeding and it's, you know, dangerous, then let him go. But if you run them down, you're still going to have to fight them. So they could hurt you, um, but it's more loot. So I'm going to run them down. And let's see, uh, we need to just move over here, right in his grill. We can't attack, but by getting right up in his face, it puts him in a really bad spot. And I'll just, um, I'm actually going to keep moving further and get behind him so that our other people might have a chance to catch up. I'm going to go over here, and we're just going to be like flying people right at this guy. Uh, I think that... This Ferdinand could get there and hit him, so I'm actually just going to move this way and not block the uh, the path and just plan on getting there later. It can be really hard to catch somebody, but in this case, we're able to actually just surround the guy so he can't get away very easily. Now, we only have a 9% chance to hit. Let me just move up here. It's still hard to hit. Um, well, line of fire is blocked by all this garbage. So instead, what I'm going to do is just move over here, and I can actually move here and fire next round, and then here we go. Now, this is the full surround. I'm going to try to knock this guy out and stun him. Ah, he, we missed. That's a shame. And just wait. It's his turn. Uh, he can't move, so he's in a terrible predicament, and now it's just time to go bink and... Um, we could switch to a dagger to finish this guy off if we wanted to try to salvage his equipment. Um, but, you know, I'm going to move right here and I'm just going to, uh, impale. Ah, oh, we missed. That's a shame. Uh, we can't really reach, so I'm just going to wait. And we'll just hit him. It's over. Sweet. So we win the battle, and look what happens. This yellow arrow means Oswald and Wendell have leveled up, which is amazing. And as far as loot goes, uh, we did get the quiver, yes. So this means that we have another ranged character that we can use that's not using javelins. We can give those javelins to one of our frontline fighters so that they can have something to do. You'll see that it's really, really useful to have your people with multiple options in combat, like a ranged option, for example, or... If the enemy has a particular defensive type and you want to have like a, a mace or an axe to get through a shield or something so you can switch and be on the advantage. Some of our characters couldn't do anything because they couldn't get close enough. But if you had throwing weapons to switch to, then they could actually have an action. So you really want to give your people versatility. Look what we get. We get some money. We get this uh, beer, which we can sell. And we get some supplies to repair, some ammunition to reload with. We get a new shield. Uh, we also get some swords. Uh, this is a very good one, you know, the, the falcon here. I mean, better than this, but it's still reasonable. And we got some cloth, which is like a valuable item. So we're going to take all of this, and we leave. And we did it. We lost nobody. I don't even think we got hit. So that was a really, really lucky time for us. The, the battlefield 
positioning worked out for us. The fact that it was night mitigated their poacher so he couldn't get shots on us, and we were able to just focus fire and obliterate Hoggart really quickly right there. Got a nice hit with the axe and just decapitated him. Hoggart lies dead in the pool of his own blood, skewered into a grotesque and panicked pose. He didn't weasel his way out of this one. You put a boot on his corpse and look at your men. For the company, for all the men who've fallen. Adler the Black spits on the dead man's face. Let's take this jerk's head and get back to Crumhorn. Time to get paid. So now we just right-click here and go back. But I'm going to just pause the game and push I to open our inventory immediately. I'm going to go to Burnfried. I'm going to put the bow in his main hand, and I'm going to put the... I'm going to equip the quiver. Once you equip it, as time passes, it will reload, but it won't reload in your inventory. I'm going to take these javelins away. I'm going to... Um, do I want to keep him with the pitchfork? I think the answer is yes. That's fine. And somebody in the front... Let's give... He's got the throwing net, but I'm also going to give Wendell these javelins because the axe is so slow this gives some versatility i like spears but do we want a sword swords are good they can, they're easy to use um but i think i'm okay with this for now i do want to however uh, everybody has a shield up there that's great we didn't get any better armor or anything for well actually what is this 10 no god no okay so that's good. And now what we're going to do is level our people up. So you click on your brother with the arrow, and it says up here in the upper left, click here to level up. When you get to level up, you get to distribute three points among these eight stats or attributes that your character has. And you get a random roll, basically, where it's saying, okay, for your one point that you spend, you can gain four hit points, or you can gain two fatigue. And... Usually, abilities with these stars um, have a higher chance of, of getting more points. And what you want to do is just think, what is this character doing, and what do I want to raise up? So I love, for example, when I see fours, that's where my eye goes, because that's the most value. Hit points are phenomenal. This Wendell is a melee fighter. I always want melee skill, because this determines your base probability of hitting. Um, and so we want to be able to hit. So now I've spent two of my points on hit points and melee skill. And what else do I want? Do I want defense? Defense is very good for staying alive. Um, initiative is quite good for going first. I'm actually going to boost my melee defense. That's just fine. And this makes it so, you know, we're a little bit tougher in combat. And we say, okay. And then that's not all, though. You raise up those stats, and then you get to go to the perk screen. I forgot this when I first started playing, but once you level up that part, you're not done. You need to go over here into the center panel and click perks. You, at first level, can pick any of these perks on the top row. Now, you can certainly read through all of these, but here's my recommendation. For a, a person who is not one of your starting brothers, I think student... Um, oh, no, wait. No, the one I like is gifted. That's not till level two. So I really, really like fast adaptation. What this means is, and this is for everybody, if you miss, okay, you get a 10% chance on your next attack to hit, and that keeps stacking up until you get a hit. So this is really, really nice for being more accurate. Colossus gives you 25% hit points, which makes you stay alive longer. So for a frontline fighter, this is incredibly good. Um... I also like, let's see, this is two extra bag slots, Pathfinder, and Recover. Okay, so from these, read through all of them, of course, but I'm going to take Colossus because it just allows them to live, gives them 25% more health, which is phenomenal. Look at that, we're up to 83 hit points. And then I'm going to go over here to Oswald, and I'll level him up, and okay, great, melee skill is up, hit points are up, and mm, do I want more fatigue? By the way, notice here, fatigue, it's, it does not go to zero at the end of the battle. You have to rest or camp or wait to get your fatigue down. So this is very none of the reason why you want to you know, manage your fatigue. And I'm going to put points into 
Ah, that's yeah, melee defense is just fine. And then we're gonna go to perks. And, and again, Oswald is a frontline fighter, and I'd like to just have a little bit more health. It's one of my starting brothers. I want to keep them alive. They're so much better than the rest of my troops. And it's a cool story to keep them going. So now we've leveled them up. I'm going to go up here to Crumhorn. I'm going to now click fast speed just to move them a little bit quicker. Along the way, Adler the Black joins your side. Got a moment, Captain? You nod for him to speak his mind. The battle has left some gear worse for wear, and some men got a good nickin' too. We can patch up both man and equipment while marching, but it's a lot faster to set down to do it. Of course, if we make camp, we should be wary of ambushes. A campfire in these parts can be seen from every which way. I'll keep that in mind. And this is a good point. You can pause the game and look at us. Right now, um, you can see that some of our spirits are eh, but in, it, all of our gear has been equipped, uh, repaired, which is good. And uh, you can see, too, that, like, for example, we've reloaded all of our ammunition, and nobody is even hurt. Here's our provisions running low, tools running low. So we need to get back to town, but we don't have to camp because our people are actually doing okay for the time being in terms of health and the durability of our equipment. So let's kind of sneak over into town, and we return to Crumhorn. The company returns to Crumhorn as victors, their heads held much higher this time. The Tutorial Brothers are not the size that they once were, but they're still a force to be reckoned with, as Hoggart learned in his final moments. You carry his head in a sack that you empty in front of Horik, the councilman's feet. That's the best way to show that the job's done. He jumps back, but the healer quickly picks the head up, stares at it, and nods. Horik, the councilman, approaches the brigand's bloodied face and eyes it carefully. Yes, yes. That's his ugly mug, all right. Servants, pay this man his money. Coin in hand, you raise your voice to the men. As long as there is blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold sword and shield, there shall stand our company. All through the realm, people will know the Tutorial Brothers. The men cheer. Oswald puts his hand on your shoulder. You did well, Captain. No matter where you lead us, the men will follow you as brothers in battle. You gain 400 crowns as brothers. Awesome. All right, so look at this. We got a bunch of money, and we can check to see if there's anything we want to purchase, anything we want to stock up on. Well, we definitely are going to need some more supplies. They're quite expensive at the moment. But as we gain reputation, people like us better, these prices will improve. Now... None of what we have, this sells for a good bit, right? It sells more here than it's worth. So that's, uh, that's nice. Let's just get some cash. And now we're ready to start exploring, building up our roster and taking on contracts. So whenever you see up here in the upper left, there's contracts. People are looking to hire mercenaries. But the number of skulls denotes how difficult it is. And... Two skulls is, is tough. You know, it's not as bad as three, but I am looking for a one skull contract. So I think what we want to do now is maybe leave and start exploring some other settlements to see what we can find in terms of weapons, armor, people to hire, and contracts that are more favorable to us. Because that one is a little bit, I'm not sure if I want that risk right now. I like to keep low until I can build up the company a bit. So everyone, this is a good place to end this second episode. We took out Hoggart, we got paid, uh, we're doing beautifully, and now the game really opens up and we can start doing our thing as a company or a brotherhood of mercenaries. Everyone, I hope you're still finding this series to be helpful and fun. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.